I'm your host with the most, Logan23. You're joining me for Senior Chapter 15, Changes. Whispering, giggling, and hushing each other, you and your friends sneak into your old dorm, newly empty after the end of classes, and make your way to the rooftop. Wow, Caitlin, I forgot how good you are at picking locks. Clearly, you also forgot how often Caitlin lost her keys. Keys are for quitters. Everyone laughs and settles down around the cushions. You gaze out over the familiar surroundings. Freshman year really was... start of everything. The very day when we partied on the rooftop, looked out over the campus, I had no idea how much my life was going to change. The first thing I thought when I saw you was, is that the girl covered in coffee? Oh, right. That was because of me. Uh, sorry. Belatedly? The second thing I thought was, Mizumi looks like someone you can really have fun with. Oh, honey, shh. You too. You pull her in for a kiss. We've definitely had a lot of fun, babe. It's strange to think it's only been four years. It feels like I've known you all for forever. Hard same. I'm so, so grateful for the wonderful time I've had with all of you. It's been a hell of an amazing year. All this reminiscing reminds me, I brought along my memory board. Why don't we take a look now and remember all the fun we've had this year? You pull it out of your tote bag and pass it around to your friends. <laughs> Look at baby Mizumi. I just want to snuggle her. Can you imagine when we uh, have a couple of munchkins of our own? Abby laughs. Not for a while, honey, but someday. But they'll be brilliant, creative, cute, like their mom. A whole trifecta. Look at the final item in your box, the watch from Alice. And then there's my newest acquisition, a memory of studying abroad, and a promise that time is on my side. Honestly, time seems to be ticking a bit, a little too quickly right now. You put the board away with a sigh as Zack nods and settles deeper into the couch cushions. Right? I know we came up here to talk about uh, what we loved about the past, but with the graduation tomorrow, we've got to look to the future. What are you looking forward to, Chris? I'm pretty excited to play the Nightingales. The team's been super welcoming, with uh, a bunch of guys helping to show me the ropes. We'll be clear cheering on you on every step of the way. What about you, Caitlin? Well, TBD starts recording in New York City in a few weeks. I'm still polishing the last of my songs! And once we're done with that, we'll fly to London, and I can finally take a lorry to my bird's flat for a slap and tickle. What the f*** is a slap and tickle? You know I love it when you talk British, babe, but maybe don't speak like that around the locals. Caitlin giggles and wraps an arm around you, leaning her head on your shoulder. Your turn. Well, I'll be starting my job at Quill soon. I've already read Hornswoggle's first two books, and... Once I touch down in London, I can start sorting through his notes. While I'm working on that, I'll be polishing my thesis novel, and I plan on submitting that to the Quills as well. So that's it. You're both off to London... soon? Yeah. To be honest, it feels like an emotional tug-of-war. We're excited for London, but sad to leave you guys. At least you'll have each other. Can I add how happy we all are that you two are back together? Not as happy as I am. You're next, James. What are you grateful for? I still can't quite believe it, but... I fly out to Alaska to join Icebreakers next month. And Ruth says I have a shot at snagging the playwright position of Genuese Brockman's Theater after my eight weeks. That sounds like a dream come true. I can pinch you if you want. I'll have to politely decline that offer, but thank you anyway, Caitlin. What's going on with you, Zig? 
I've been assigned to a junior high in Meguro, and I checked it out over spring break. It's incredible. Everyone within the program is so helpful, and I'm finally making some headway in the language. How do you say my name is Zig? Nice to meet you. Watashi wa Zig desu dozu yoro shiki. What's next for you, Bika? I'm transferring to Hog University in the fall for my second year of law school. They've got an amazing mentorship program. I'll be doing what I'm already doing here, studying, studying, and more studying, but now with more sunshine and palm trees. Sounds like you'll be living the life. Remember us after they name you district attorney. Okay, Zach, your turn. Um, honestly? I'm still living on Cloud9, Cloud9 being my code name for Grant's apartment. But I got a call back for my internship with Northbridge uh, Architectural Firm. My interview's next week. Zach, that's terrific. Good luck. You'll lace it. Abby takes Tyler's hand and leans her head on his shoulder. And Tyler and I got hired at the same video game studio in Bay Area, not too far from where his parents live. The company's culture is great. They even have an office D&D campaign. We'll start in a month, so we're going to visit my family for a little while, and while well, before we can make the move. Oh, Tyler and Abby, that sounds perfect for you. You've been through so much. You deserve it. You look around at all your friends, and your eyes start to prick with tears. It's really happening. Our ships have come in and they're just headed towards different seas. I think it's... I'm not... Uh, it's, 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 it's a bundle of emotions. It's two and a half years we've been doing this. It's sad, it's wonderful, it's, it's joyous, it's depressing, it's everything. It's just everything. You, you can go in full circle, actually. But... Mizumi has always been positive. So. Think of who we were when we first came up to this roof. Would we even recognize ourselves? I'd love to tell freshman Chris that everything would be alright. And he was so hung up on his past. But now I've moved on. And I have a job that I love. And a lot of confidence in myself. I wish I could send a letter to my youngest self to tell him how successful he'll be. I do the same with the barista's egg. Tell him to keep his chin up. College isn't impossible after all. Freshman Tyler would be shocked to discover Abby liked him all along. Abby giggles and presses her lips to his. I would tell freshman Caitlin that she can survive coming out to her parents and how supportive they've been since. I'd probably give Junior Becca a good shake to help her set up her priorities straight. And, but then I'd compliment her hair. We've got our whole lives ahead of us. Life can't get much better than this. Caitlin gives a mischief a smile. Are you sure about that? Because being on the rooftop is giving me one heck of an idea. I think I'm smelling what you're selling. Would this have anything to do with a certain favorite party game? You mean, never have I ever... Caitlin throws up her hands. Truth or truth? The last time... Oh, I forgot about this one. It's been a while. It's been so long. Are you sure we can handle the truth or the truth? There's only one way to find out. What do you say, Mizumi? Yes. Yes! Oh my god, we're coming full circle. Truth or truth, the bookends of our college experience. Guys, stop talking like that or I'm gonna cry. We've all known each other for so long, though. Are there even any truths left to find out about each other? I'm sure we've all got a few secrets. After all, James, Becca, and I didn't live with you all during the freshman year. Yeah... I want to hear all your dirty little secrets the six of you have been keeping. You'll never convince us to rat on each other. These stories are going to the grave. Oh, I'm totally spilling the beans. Traitor! 
then I propose that we uh, dedicate this first round of Truth to Truth to unraveling the past mysteries of the sweet. What's the grossest thing that ever, ever happened while you were all living together? Probably in the time Caitlin left a turkey leg in the shower, Tyler tried to make sauerkraut. A bird pooped in Abby's room. I don't know. I'm going to go with a turkey leg in the shower. Caitlin bringing food in the shower is hardly news, Mizumi. She did it all the time when we lived in Vasquez's house. Wow, Caitlin, we never knew. Oh, she toned it way down by then. You have no idea of the horrors we've seen. I went to the take the shower, and the turkey had fallen on the floor of the tub. It was greasy for weeks. We were basically wadding in chicken broth. I said I was sorry, jeez. Way to degrade up the past, or dredge. I sprinkled some sage and rosemary in there, but it didn't help like I thought it would. You know, I was getting ready to say that I envied the shared experiences you all must have had, but I've changed my mind. <laughs> Personally, I'm more intrigued than ever. I have a question. What's the weirdest thing you ever walked in on someone doing? Sex. Let's be honest, we know it. Once I saw Zack and Tyler arguing about how to un how to fold underwear. Chris exfoliating with cottage cheese. Caitlin going Godzilla on gingerbread house. <laughs> okay, why is it Caitlin's things are kind of cool? Um, Chris exfoliating with cheese. Ben? <laughs> uh, Zack and Tyler are going over how to fold underwear. You know, I think I'm going to go with cottage cheese. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you really going to drop that out of context? Chris, the context was that you read a clickin' article that said a cottage cheese mask would make you, give you a dewy glow. Yeah, it definitely did not do that, unless a greasy sheen counts as dewy and my breakout the next day counts as a glow. I'm sure you know this uh, deep in your heart, but no, that doesn't count. I hope you're happy, Mizumi. Now you've gone and spilled all the secrets of the suite. Maybe not all the secrets, but I think it's high time we turn the tables. You and Zack turn to smile at James Beckinsing. You've gotten away with asking all the questions, but I want to know about your freshman year experiences. Oh god. The world wants to know, uh, did you ever have a fling with a roommate? What was your prettiest roommate drama, or pettiest? Favorite freshman year memory? Eh, why not? And Zig, you can't share one we already know. I want news stories. Zig smiles softly. Okay, uh, a top contender was uh, when I was sick and I had to miss a concert in the city. I wanted to see. That doesn't sound like a good memory at all. Well, Aaron enlisted our other sweet mates to throw me a surprise concert right in my room. We blasted all the band's songs and Aaron made me pancakes. It's one of my favorite memories because it was just this really silly, unexpected gesture. Way more memorable than the actual concert would have been. What a sweet guy. You and I both hit the freshman sweet jackpot. Now, James, before the bad Sebastian of freshman year, he and I had some grand adventures. I fondly remember how I was feeling melancholy one week. He bought me tickets to a Broadway show. However, his car broke down on the drive to the city in the middle of nowhere, and we ended up missing the show entirely. But we camped out at a tiny diner and really talked for the first time in a while. That was truly lovely. I'm sensing a trend, missing shows but catching friendship. Yeah, I guess even at its worst, Sebastian had his good moments. My favorite freshman year memory was rushing with Madison. I may have been a brat, but at least I had her to balance me out sometimes. Aw, oh, you guys really have gotten lucky with the people in your lives. Now, I have one more question for my sweet mates, and I want to hear everyone's answers. Tell me, the best part of living with me, who was your favorite sweet mate? What you miss about our sweet? All three of these are like. Even though egotistical is number one. Um, I 
feel like a good neutral one is what you miss about her suite. The late nights, staying up bonding together. The movie marathons. The feelings that I was surrounded by friends all the time. The games of truth are truth, duh! Okay, you guys are forgetting the best part of living in the suite. Got to be study buddies! Oh god. Abby chuckles fondly. Man, I'm gonna miss college. The things we've experienced together. Nothing can replace them. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot Caitlin passing a subtle wink to Zach, who lets out an exaggerated yawn. Oh, wow, we, we look at the time! Yellows Tyler, who grins. Right! Oh, we should really get going. We'll need our beauty sleep for the ceremony tomorrow. Wait, what? What are you talking about? Why are you all smiling like that? Suddenly, everyone starts getting up and filing out, pleading various excuses while snickering behind their hands. You look around to find everyone suddenly gone except for Caitlin, standing alone under the hanging lamps, a soft smile on her face. What's this all about, Caitlin? Where's everyone going? Caitlin bites her lips and walks over to you, takes her hands. Can you blame me for trying to get you alone on such a romantic night? Come on, sit by me. She tugs you by both hands over to the couch, and you sit down beside her, leaning your head on her shoulder. Can you see it, Mizumi? See what, the stars? Are we playing I Spy here? She chuckles softly and kisses the top of your head. I'm thinking about our future. I mean, we know our next step, but there are so many more steps after that. Caitlin smiles up at the twinkling stars while tracing her, tracing circles on your leg with her thumb. So much more future to share and look forward to. Walking hand in hand through our big backyard, shout singing as loud as we want to because no one's around. The perfect solitude to ride on misty mornings. Going in the big city to play concerts or hosting our own music festivals on all our land. With rambunctious kids getting up in the to a world of trouble, of course. They will be your kid after all. Excuse you, our kid? Oh, Mizumi, we're gonna make each other so happy. All while we use our voices and our art to make this world a better place. Oh, Caitlin, but we write a song about all of that because you're painting a really beautiful picture of our future. Funny you should say that. Caitlin pulls her guitar case out where it uh, was concealed from behind the couch. A private concert, huh? You know it, babe. Ever since we got back together, my mojo's back in a major way. Caitlin leans over to kiss you on the cheek before she starts to strum softly and then sing. You took my heart by a string. You taught my soul to sing. I didn't know I was just a kite untethered. You hold me in your arms. You amaze me with your charms, girl, there's no storm we can't weather. So stay with me tonight and stay with me tomorrow. And stay with me tomorrow after that. Girl, I'll be a light, I'll keep away your sorrow. Stay with me forever and a half. Caitlin's sweet voice trails off, but she continues to pick out a gentle melody on the guitar. Caitlin, you're the most amazing woman on earth. Oh, shucks. An artist's only as good as her muse. She stops playing and swoons in for a quick, tender kiss. Seriously, babe, that song was lovely. Just like you. I'm so ridiculously honored to be your girlfriend. That's great and all, but how would you feel about being my wife? 
she sets the guitar down before you and pulling a ring box out of the guitar case and opening it up. Caitlin's ring. A promise of forever. You gasp, tears suddenly springing up in your eyes. How about it? Will you stay with me forever and a half? You're... You're really asking me to... To marry me, yes. No diamond choice, huh? <sighs> yes. Yes? Of course, yes. Yes! <laughs> Laughing ecstatically, Caitlin slides a ring on your finger and sparkles as it catches the lamplight. Suddenly, Caitlin springs to her feet and takes your face in her hands, eagerly kissing you. As she pulls away, you see tears in her eyes and a wide smile on her face. Oh my god, we're engaged! Stand up and tug Caitlin in your arms, and the two of you spin around in a giddy circle together. I'm looking at my future wife, and God, is she gorgeous. I'm so happy. I love you. I'm so happy. Me too. All of it. The happy, the loving you, the repeating the part about being happy... Embrace Kaylin and kiss her long and passionately until your head spins and you break away breathlessly. The door to the rooftop creaks open and Abby sticks her head out. Did she say yes? You flash the sparkling new diamond on your ring finger. Mizumi said yes! Abby swings the door open and all your friends tumble out, cheering and laughing. Were all of you in on this? Guilty. I had to sit on my hands to keep from blurting it out during the dinner. And then she sat on my hands while we were all crammed up against the door eavesdropping. Yeah, sorry about that. We're so happy for both of you. I guess it goes without saying that you're all invited to our wedding. Bring it in, you guys. Everyone comes together into one giant group hug. The night deepens as you and your friends and your fiancé share more jokes and excitement. And eventually you leave the rooftop of your dorm behind one final time. The next morning you and Caitlin get up early to go for a walk through the park on the campus. Caitlin takes your hand and smiles brightly. What a great way to spend a morning. Caitlin kisses your cheek. With my new fiancé. Suddenly, Edgar and Tyler come running towards you and Caitlin. Mizumi, Caitlin, just the people we were hoping to see. Yeah, like, you're the perfect resource to complete our master plan. Master plan? What's going on? And is that Sebastian? You know Sebastian, trailing after the two of them a little more sedatedly. He waves as he catches up. Yep, I asked for their help with something, and I'd love to get yours, too. Hello, all. Silas correct with my financial backing and competitive nature, and my genius and leadership experience in LARPing and other forms of organized quasi-combat. I enlisted their aid in planning the most ultimate senior prank ever. And you're the missing link. You're friends with everyone, Mizumi. But no one else but you could get the rest of the campus together at the last minute for an epic paintball battle. I already own about a dozen paintball markers and some protective equipment. And I dabble in paintball myself, so I can provide supplies, upscale low-impact paint pellets. The Dean even approved our plan. 
So, all we need is you to bring Heartfall together. What do you think, Mizumi? One last hurrah? That sounds awesome! Heartfelt would never forget that. We'd certainly be leaving our mark on campus. Eh heh heh. Eh heh heh. Um. No. We already had her reuniting with Truth and Truth, and... Eh, maybe we'll have a Diamond Edition in the future. We've done quite a few of the for freshmen, as well as junior and one. I hope you'll understand. I have enough to do without planning a paint war, and then cleaning myself up after a paint war. A very reasonable answer. It's a big day for all of you. Maybe we could uh, do it over the summer. It'd be a good way to reconnect. You chat for a moment or two, well, more before you return home to get ready for the graduation ceremony. You go home and change into your graduation gown before heading down the Hartfell Quad for the graduation ceremony. A makeshift stage, seating, and tables for refreshments have been set out, and many people mill around. You spot Chris in the crowd with a group of people who can only be his family. He waves you over. Hey, Mizumi. You remember my sister, AJ. Hiya! How could I forget? And who's this handsome fella? This is Kyle. He's a little shy, but uh, a pretty great brother. N nice to meet you. And I'm Chris's mother, Barb. You're pretty. It's so nice to meet you, Mizumi. Chris has told me so much about you. All good, I hope. Only good... The way he put it was, I could always count on Mizumi to have my back. In a world with uncertain, true friendship makes all the difference. Thank you, Mizumi, for being Chris's friend. You and Chris's family spend a few pleasant minutes and small talk, where you slip away to connect with the rest of your friends. Your parents suddenly wave you over from the crowd, but as you start towards each other, Mr. and Mrs. Lau come over out of nowhere and sweep you into their arms. Oh, Beipo just told us. Welcome to the family, Mizumi. Engaged? I can hardly believe it. Our hearts are so full. Trailing after them, Caitlin comes up to you and intertwines her fingers with yours. Sorry, babe. This cat's too cool to keep in the bag. You heard it from... heard it here first, Mom and Dad. Caitlin and I are engaged. Your parents' faces light up with joy. I'm so excited. Irises or calla lilies, look at my ring. Kiss me, Caitlin. Wow, you're bossy. She cradles your face and her hands for a moment before planning a brief but loving kiss on your lips. Well done, Bean. Mizumi, Caitlin, I'm so happy for you both. Are we? As are we. I'm Grace, by the way. This is Peter. Maureen and Seven. Your two families spend a few more minutes on the introductions before you slip away to connect with the rest of your friends. You pass James as the buff at the buffet table, loading up on a plate of cocktail weenies. He spots you and waves. Rachel stands by the buffet table as well, her graduation gown crumpled up in her arms, thinking horde of oars in her graduation cap. What? Just because I'm actually graduating doesn't mean I'm going to be mainstream and look the part. But this ugly hat thing is good for holding snacks. Oh, Rachel. You're perfect just the way you are. Happy graduation. Rachel shrugs and returns to her snack pillaging. You notice Becca setting Abby's tassel on straight and the two of them wave you over. Hey, Grun. How are you feeling? Ready for your speech? I couldn't believe it when the Dean asked me to give one. I'm gonna... 
Mm, totally cry all over my notes. Rock the speech. Throw it, probably. Totally cry all over my notes. Getting misty eye just thinking about saying goodbye to Hartfeld. Oh god, me too. But I bet your speech will be incredible. Oh, thanks. I'll catch up with you when we find our seats, okay? I still have some mingling to do. You got sight of Zig in a cap and gown, being fussed over by his mother and four sisters. It sounds like they're arguing over uh, the tassel placement. How does it feel to reach graduation at last? It feels wonderful. I'm pretty sure Mizumi was talking to Zig. <laughs> it feels pretty darn good, Mizumi. The world's at our feet. As you're walking, the flash of a camera takes you off guard. Whoa. With your vision clears, you see Zack sandwiched between two apologetic people who must be his parents. I'm so sorry! I wanted a photo of Zack in his gown, but I never know how to manage the flash of these silly phones. I'm assuming these are my parents. Zack's father reaches out to shake her hand. I'm Simon Zilberg, and the woman responsible for any res possible retinal damage is my wife, Mary. So you're Mizumi. Zack won't stop talking about you. Sounds like you've been a good friend to him. I can't take all the credit. We both wound up in the same freshman dorm with a terrific circle of people. And now we've been stuck being friends for life. What a torment. It's really important to build a good support network in college, and you found one right out of the gate. You and Mizumi are really lucky. You and Zack share a fond glance. Believe me, Dad, I know. You and Zack's families continue to chat until Abby comes up to you and slightly out of breath. Come on, you guys, the ceremony's about to start. We need to find our seats. You offer a quick goodbye to the Zilbergs before following Abby. Ah, Zack's last name's Zilberg. Crowd quiets down. Steen Stafford takes the stage. Ahem. <clears throat> Welcome, esteemed graduates, and of course, the, the families and friends. Passes his gaze over the crowd, full of people in black gowns and caps. I'd like to turn the podium over to a young woman whose contributions to this college have been innumerable. Amidst the applause of the audience, you step up to the podium and prepare to speak. Hello, Hartfeld. When I arrived here four years ago, I almost had to turn around and leave right away. If I had, I would have missed out on discovering a mentor in Enrique Vasquez, although I didn't know it right away, and the closest circle of friends a girl could have ever asked for. It was those friends, that community, that kept me at Hartfeld. They cheered me on. They kept me going through all of the drama and hardship when I couldn't anymore. We love you, Mizumi! Sit down, Zack, shut up! The crowd laughs as Zack shouts from the audience. This year has been full of... unhealthy levels of caffeine intake. That's my life. Challenges. I can't lie to you, this year was hard. On top of the rigors of senior year, I struggled with strains and breaks in my personal life. I almost fell apart. But once again, my community stepped up to provide me with a safe, warm place to land. So, here we all are, on the brink of the biggest change of our lives. And we don't know when we'll see this place next. But the heartfelt that will travel with us, wherever we go, isn't the place. It's not the dorms, or the quad, or the library, or even the true heart of Hartfeld. The coffee shop. Giggles break out amongst the students. It's the community, the love, the reminder that there are people you can call home to no matter where they may be. Catch Caitlin's eye. I know I found my home in one partic person particularly, so thank you, Hartfeld University. It's been a true pleasure. You smile as the audience cheers and step down from the podium. As the clapping subsides, Dean Stanford speaks up again. Thank you so much for your wise words. And now, it is my honor to award you a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in English. 
graduating cum laude, Mazumi Vinti. The crowd goes wild, you see your mom and dad jump up and cheer. We're so proud of you, sweetie! Yeah, you heard that? Cum laude! That's really good! <sighs> you need to stop it with the... Your blood pounding in your ears in the aftermath of your speech, you hold your degree tightly. Dean Stafford begins to list off the rest of the graduates, and you listen for your friends' names, sharing for each one of them. Receiving his Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Computer Science, Tyler Allen. Receiving her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree with a major in Studio Art, a Bachelor of Arts degree in Gender Studies, Abby Bishop. Receiving her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree with a major in Music, Caitlin Lau. Receiving his Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Mathematics, Zugman Ortega. Receiving his Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Political Science, Christopher Powell. Receiving his Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Architecture, Zachary Zilberg. Several more names come and go, and the rest of the ceremony passes in a rush. Eventually, everyone clusters together on the quad for a cap toss. Surrounded by Becca, James, and your fellow graduates, you pause to look at the people who made your time at Hartfeld so memorable. We really made it, you guys. I love you all more than I can say. And I love you more than I ever ima possibly imagined. Luckily for us, we have the rest of our lives to imagine it together. I'll always love you. I can't wait to marry you, Mizumi. Caitlin wraps her arms around you, pulling you close for a long, gentle kiss. You bring your hands up to run through her hair before cupping her face. Looking in her eyes, you sigh happily and kiss her one more time, then drop her hands to look around at the group again. I guess there's just one more thing to do. Take off your cap and hold it firmly in your hand, your breath suddenly catching in your throat. Are you ready, Mizumi? With all of you by my side and in my heart? Absolutely. And with that, you toss your cap up into the bright blue expanse of the sky, whispering one final goodbye to Hartfeld University. On behalf of the freshman team, thank you for joining us on this journey. We hope your future will be bright and full of friendship. Have a graduation! Wait, we're not done yet. We're not done yet with the flashback. You thought we were done, didn't you? Oh, you thought we were done. So, for all of you watching, it has been a tremendous two-year journey for me, and two-year journey for the freshman series. Um, so, for just a moment, I would like to take us back to the very first video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Locum23. Back when I first started. Choices! Back when I didn't Freshman, do voices. Book one, chapter one. Back when I just Welcome read it as me. Hartfield University. We've come a long way. So, to all those who watch the, uh, Most Wanted series, just want to let you know. Like, it has been a long time, you know? Um, Tough one. Oh, like, I'm gonna just... Like, we didn't voice at all. Let me get tackled by a pretty girl. Never let me forget it. And then I remember oh. I've gone through many transitions. And I'm not gonna make you guys watch at all if you want to. This will forever be up on my channel. Um, the journey, the transition. Back then it was just me, regu you know, reading regular. Um, Chris had even gone through kind of like a... a a derpy kind of jock phase and the whole nine yards and you know 
it's it's been a long long journey um and i honestly couldn't have done it without my community we're at over 10,000 subscribers now um and i continue to grow you guys continue to grow with me and i thank each and every one of you we've been through our ups and we've been through our downs um you know when i originally started this i just wanted to have fun i had no goals in mind um i had nothing and i'll just let this keep playing but i am had no goals i had no nothing in mind um, and as I did the freshman series, as I did choices, I evolved as, as, as a person and started to let myself out there. Um, and evolved the characters, evolved all of it. Um, and I'd like to make this mission statement very clear once again. Um, pretty much from the beginning, my community has been fun, happiness, um, you know, nothing for clickbait, hype, views, etc. And I've never wanted to do anything to jeopardize my so my heart or my soul. And um, I will continue to do so. I will continue to offer you guys the best that is of of me. Um, because this is my legacy. Um, something that I have not told a lot of you. Um... This legacy is something that I will be leaving behind. Um, it's something that when my autistic brother pulls up on his, his tablet and watches, and he enjoys. And it's something that I've never wanted to do hate. I've never wanted to be what some people have claimed me to be as homophobic, racist, misogynist, or anything. People have really tried to do some low blows. Even attacking my family, uh, which includes my two special needs brothers, which I've given my life up for. Literally and figuratively. This is going to be tough for me. But... This is something that my brothers will be able to look back on when I'm gone. My voice will forever echo... After I'm gone. Um, unfortunately, I got some bad news. Um, about my health. And I won't be around forever. So... For me, I will continue pouring every bit of me into this content until the day I take my final breath. <sighs> um, I've been holding this back for a while now, and I didn't want to say anything. Um, just a few people knew, but um. Yeah, I thought I would make it official to everyone. So, you know, there's been a lot of heat um, and a lot of things towards my channel. If you guys remember back in, back in January, February of this year, there was people who literally tried to have... Um, <laughs> fellow YouTubers attack my community, try to take statements out of context, and try to ruin the good that I believe our community has done. Um, my community is, is basically meant to be a utopia. We accept everyone. Um, you know, no matter how tall you are, no matter how big you are, no matter your race, no matter your sex, your gender, whatever. It's meant to have fun. And um, clearly if you go through all 2,000 videos I have on my channel, never once have you seen me display hate. And there's a lot of content on here. 
Um, you guys have kept me going um, for a while now because I have um, my life has been pretty bad, and doing sitting down and doing choices for a very long time was something that I enjoyed. And people really tried to ruin that. People tried to bring hatred between me and other YouTubers that do choices. And they tried to ruin this community. And I don't want that to ever happen. And I, I had to literally fall on my sword. I had to kiss a lot of ass. And I had to apologize to people who do not deserve it. Um, to, to keep this community in its utopian form. I really did. Um, and so I could have something where my brothers could look back through and see happiness and things like that. Um, you look at the comment sections, yes, I, I delete anything that, that is hate. Um, and hopefully one day, you know, through all the message I've sent, and there's plenty of people who reach out to me, um, there's plenty of people who reach out to me and say thank you. That, you know, some of the times that I relieve puzzle pieces of myself, which there is a big one coming, that will be not just a face reveal, but everything that I've been through that you guys don't know about. And it's been very trying, very hard to do, and it probably will be my final video. Um, so, I've enjoyed this journey thanks to you guys. I haven't got much out of it personally myself besides meeting some incredible friends um, who I can call friends now. Um, meeting some incredible people who, again, this community as, you know, I've had your back and you've had mine and you guys have got me through some really tough days. Um, so I just want to say thank you. I honestly... Do the news I got, I didn't think I'd make it to now to see the end of Freshman. I didn't know how long Freshman would keep going. The whole series for, you know, junior, sophomore, senior. I didn't even know if they'd have a finale. And I, it'd be kind of cool as a as a final thing from Choices is maybe. Um, <laughs> maybe one day they could go back and, and kind of have like a rekindling um, of that. Um, it'd be kind of cool, but, yeah, um, you know, kind of like a, a two-part series like they've done in the past, where it's, you know, let pay 30 diamonds and get, like, it was about two hours of content, um, at least if you did it my way, otherwise speed readers were, like, done in 15 minutes, but, um, again, thank you all for this journey, again, let's say it's been two long years, and, um, Freshman has meant more to me then, you know, me and Choices, we do have love-hate relationship, but at the end of the day, I can respect them. Um, I love what they do. I love their stories. Um, even though, I, you know, sometimes it's, it's, some of them are a little harder to get through, but it seems Choices along the way has, has bettered itself as well in some areas. Um, so it looks like they're, you know, improving as well. So, um, yeah, that's that's all I gotta say. Um, you know, we're all here for one another, and I would like to say that we should all try and be more positive to one another. We should all be one together more, treat one another better, um, and do better. Um, because... It's just the more humane thing to do, and it's the right thing to do. So, you know, um, yeah, I'm not going to do my usual outro. Um, hopefully, let's see how far we can continue this journey. So, without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.